Hey man, how are you? Very well, thank you, man. How you oh, doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's been yeah. a while since we last spoke. Yeah, been man. Like two weeks, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. but um, <clears throat> there's been a for the people watching. You might have noticed that there's a bit of a change in our background color. And yeah. um, do you want to tell them why, Pumalin? Yeah. So I don't know whether you watched the previous stream where we mentioned we were going to do like this little laid back sort of content a little bit more like a podcast and not a live stream mm-hmm. and the main content will be just us talking you know answering questions about each you know updating each other on what's going on and have any advices for each other just general chat we do this very very often in slack um, we just jump uh-huh. on a huddle and and we just chat for like an hour Mm-hmm. And oftentimes I'm like, ah, oh, you know, we should just record this and put it out there, because just it just is a lot of value, uh, you know, a lot of very honest opinions come out, very honest uh, feelings that mm-hmm. I think be useful for the community to show, like you know, we are not perfect or whatever. It's it's, it's mm-hmm. just I feel like if I watch someone like this, I'll be more connected to that person, and mm-hmm. I know like a lot of YouTubers who who put their um, content something like this, like I I. I Pretty much inspired by Ali Abdul. I'm not sure how many people know him, um, but like him, him and his brother, they do like this podcast thing. But pretty much, is it's like a, a brotherly advice sort of show. Um, they update each other on each other's lives and go through what they are feeling, what's their what's bothering them that week, uh, what's what's an insight they had this you know this week and stuff like that, which is very interesting yeah. to listen to. And I realized that because I'm listening to it backwards. Because uh, I start with like the most recent episode and I go backwards, I realize there's a lot of, you know, if you start from the beginning and you watch all the way to the top, you actually know that person a lot, uh, and it's very easy to relate to them. So I'm yeah. like, you know what? Nobody does this in the Webflow community, so why not we just give it a shot? Yeah. So that, that's something we're trying to do as well. Like, I, just to add my point to that, um, I feel like a lot because you know, in, in our other talk flow episodes where we have to plan everything, so we plan each topic, we plan yeah. what we're going to say. Um, and in this show, and we're going to come to the name in a second, but in this show, we, we're we not going to plan anything. We're just going to, like, talk, you know, how we normally talk. Um, yeah. Normally, in the morning, we have, like, weekly chats. We jump on a call, we just chat away about workflow and what we're doing, um, any new strategies we're trying, any clients that we've got, any lessons we learned, you know, anything of the sort, really. Just being, like, open, honest friends and just, you know, being super transparent and real to be honest and authentic so yeah that's the vibe that we're trying to make for this series you can say of talk flow um yeah just an open honest conversation about anything random that comes to our mind to be honest and they're just being super authentic yeah yeah cool right let's let's just get into it oh wait no we have the name uh name of the podcast is called all talk (laughs) is it yeah okay yeah it's like is it uh, all talk all chat it's all talk alt talk uh yeah. no idea how we're going to design the logo or whatever but yeah, yeah just well, alternative chats pretty much what we do and that's the idea of it yeah that's the idea so yeah i mean you got you guys are probably going to see the logo when this comes out but um yeah all talks yeah. is a new series of talk flow and you would explain what it's going to be but yeah man let's just get straight into it yeah cool so since it's been two weeks how was the past two weeks been honestly for you. man it's been uh it's just been a bit i mean okay cool so i'm just gonna start off with like a banger right nobody <laughs> really knows this about me um <laughs> none of my actually a few only a few of the people in the industry for modern knows this and a couple of yeah. people some of my clients know it as well but um i'm actually a student so <laughs> i'm a dental <laughs> student um so yeah study dentistry um so yeah that might come as a surprise to a lot of people you know not that many people assume that i'm a student let alone they assume i'm 19 a lot of people think i'm 25 or something i thought but you were yeah, 26 or 27 <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a 19 i'm a first year dental student yeah um, i took a gap year last year so that's why i'm first year you know if i didn't take a gap year i would have been in second year but yeah, yeah. i'm a first year dental student and um in london study dentistry to be honest and yeah i've started in in september and to be honest bro like to answer your question that since uni started like before that i had like a whole year and a half of just no studying actually 
do a little bit of studying, but like I was in total isolation from the academic world, if that makes sense. Yeah. I was working on my business, you know, in isolation because there was a lot of lockdowns during that period as well. And just coming out from that, one thing that I've like realized is my social battery is like so low and I can like charge that up. So yeah. because of that, because, and, it, and it makes sense, right? Like I haven't been socializing, I haven't been interacting with people for like a year and a half. So when uni started, everyone was there, new people, da, da, you're making new friends. And that kind of like, I mean, it was fun. Like I was socializing. But, but it, it took over really, took over your, yeah, your whole energy like, and your time. I told you, isn't it? Like, yeah. Yeah, just talking and just being around people. Um, yeah, I remember before uni started, you were like, no man, I'm going to come back. I'm going to work at night and then go to uni. Yeah. I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. You're going to be yeah. spending most of your time making friends. Yeah, I mean, I think that's especially... Yeah, it's it's good, man. Yeah. Months, yeah, it is good, but like, again... Plus, yeah, it's honestly, it's the best part. Best part of Yeah, uni. definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, again, man, I'm just like still getting used to the balance of, you know, balancing uni and work. Yeah. Um, it is a bit tough, obviously, when you've got exams and dental school, it is probably one of the hardest courses you can do. Like, yeah. some people are hard in the medicine. Um and yeah man even right now i mean it's not hard it's, it's just yeah, long, it's, it? it's like so yeah. much content and just it's, there's a lot of things that goes on because yeah. i was there last year in my final year uh, mm-hmm. but the difference is that i didn't want to do my final i was like you know what i just want to get this done with so i can come back to work and do yeah. something with to start making money right i was so done with the <laughs> yeah. studying but yours is a little bit different like you want to you know continue working uh, continue working and studying make new friends yeah. so i was like oh that's going to be a bit challenging because you'll have two things that will want to tuck in your energy. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's just about finding a balance. Yeah, it's definitely about finding a balance, man. And um and before before uni, right, my my only goal, my only desire yeah. you can say is just, you know, do well in the business, make money, make clients yeah. happy, post consistently. But now you got like another whole set of desires and goals that you want when you start uni. Yeah. So before, let's just say like the main goal was just to do well in business right make money now it's that as well as do good get good grades revise do these lectures and all of that stuff as well as making yeah. friends having fun which i'm yeah. trying to cut down you know i'm not trying to spend a lot of time doing that um but yeah that's one thing i saw and on top of that like last week um i'm not sure if people that are watching will know but on my linkedin i posted that i got a new office so that office as well like it's taking a lot of my time like you know traveling there but it is it, it is like i mean I'm, I'm gonna get into the office in a bit but like just as a brief note of that the office has been good um but again that just adds a whole new thing a whole new element to my life like having an office um but yeah man, i mean to be honest like the past two weeks i have been getting back into the rhythm of doing things like I'm still, I was still kind of messing around a little bit, going out and, you know, messing around in uni, but I'm still, I'm, I'm still going to, I'll still get the work done, but I always have this feeling at the end of the day, like, bro, I I could have, I could have done a lot better than I did. Like I wake up and okay, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Da, da, da. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, ah, oh. like, so what, what do you do in that, in that time? time? Sorry. What do you do instead of? What do you want to do? What, what, what's the thing that you do instead of the work that you wanted to do? Do you procrastinate or do you... Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, mostly like, it's, it's, it's mostly at the time where it's like... Um, so, for example, I wake up right in the morning, like 6.30, 7 a.m. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go gym. I'm going to do this. And then... So, I even wrote... I even like... Because I do like day, daily journaling. And I yeah. even wrote this down. I try to answer like a lot of these questions that you're asking me. And what I wrote down, right, was this pros- there's perhaps two reasons why... I, I'm not satisfied at the end of my day and one of them is being you it's just I set too many goals so mm. too many tasks that are just unrealistic to do all, all in one day or the yeah. second thing is that I just procrastinate um or it could be and both that, yeah no it's usually the procrastinate follows because there's so many things that you got to do exactly when yeah. there's so many in your in your to-do list your mind just doesn't want to focus on anything yeah it's a very very human thing to do when you have like shit ton of work to do immediately your all instinct is just because you feel very uncomfortable and your whole your whole fight or flight system is to get you out of this uncomfortable situation yeah. so you you tend to procrastinate whereas when you have only one thing to do you you're more focused on that one thing which yeah. i just realized again 
But I'll get to that later down down the conversation. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, a lot of people say that less is more. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I've yet learned that because I'm like really young. But I think eventually I yeah. will learn that that less is more. Um, but then another thing, bro, is like, you know, you know, you're doing these menial tasks every day. Like, um, okay, I'm posting on LinkedIn. I'm doing client work. I'm doing this. I'm doing that, and you're kind of doing the same thing every single day for a long period of time. Yeah. Eventually, you'll get to a point, right, where you're like, hmm, I'm doing the same thing. Like, yeah, it gets very much. It kind of plays with your mind, right? Like, oh, let me. And then I feel like this is where a lot of people get hooked onto like the new thing, where it's like, okay, I need to be doing something different in order for me yeah. to be, you know, to progress in the business. Whereas, is I don't think that's the case. You should just stick to a few consistent tasks every single day and that will eventually um you know give you results but yeah man i've been thinking about that recently like i'm doing the same thing every day but then sometimes my brain goes oh try find something new to do try find a new platform to you know <laughs> yeah. try find a new strategy on on linkedin try do this that, yeah. that. maybe that will work and like i don't know what i don't know why that happens maybe just like a human thing but perhaps like i don't know you can explain that a bit more that's I think is because either because I do get that as well. Like oh, I'm just mm. doing the same thing again, 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 again. When you try to do something new, it's you, you're more engaging. Your mind is more engaged in something. Mm-hmm. So just remember when you first discover web design, web flow, you spend a lot of time just just focused on one thing. Whereas once you get good at something, you don't do that anymore. It's it becomes almost mm-hmm. second nature, and then mm-hmm. you're you're still craving for that. I want to do something new. I want to do something new, and that's why you keep jumping different things. Mm-hmm. It's it's a sign of like okay, you're 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 really good at the one thing, and you just want to push yourself to do something different, which is actually good, I think, because if if you're really good at one thing and you just stop there, you're gonna you're just gonna coast, you know. Whereas if you keep continuously pushing yourself to try something new, without giving up, like let's say you know. Just because you're good at Webflow, you don't completely throw it out of the ground and go to like Shopify or something like that, right? Like you, you, you push whatever you know to like a different extent. So in that case, you know, it could be like trying something more complex, or trying a new design that you've never done before, yeah. or you know, risking a little bit so that you are still learning. Uh, yeah. I, I think because I I was definitely there, and I'm still sometimes in that same space where like ah, uh, you know, when they give you a design, you're like, it's very, it's like. I can I can do this like you know I I'm not challenged like I just look at it I'm like ah uh, it's just you can already see how it's already built yeah and like I need to do this 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 so it's not very engaging whereas when you see something that's a little bit more custom a little bit more unique your mind is immediately like oh shit how do I do this how do I do this you know should yeah. I do I do it this way this way this way and then or sometimes you know you completely like oh wait is that even possible and then you go and search you know clonables or like you know code or some shit like that. So then your mind is still, you know, racing. So I think that's where you, you are like, you're finding work, but I think you're still not like challenged enough. Mm-hmm. Um, in the sense, I, I, you're just good enough or better than what most work that comes to you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're, you're always like trying to do something else. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean that is true. Sorry, that is true in in regards to like client work, but it's also in the yeah. context of like just normal tasks like for example okay let me give you like a actual example yeah so let's say my day my daily task is okay post on linkedin record this youtube video Mm. um, update some crm and let's say plan the following week's blog posts or content i wake up i'm like okay i'm gonna do these things but then before i do i'm like hmm it just feels like i've done it before and i'm like okay why am i doing this like it's either a problem of clarity like it's either that I'm unclear of the outcome that's gonna happen. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Of like, um, or it's just like I've done this so many times. I'm kind of bored. Perhaps. It's yeah, like... it's it's I think mix of both. Like you've done it so many times, and I don't. So for example, let's say the blog post or like this LinkedIn post or whatever. If let's say is there an average. Um, client closing you can think of like let's say you post I don't know 10 links 10 LinkedIn posts or like 10 blog posts mm. how much conversion to an actual paying client does that make like is it 10% or 1% well are you asking me a question yeah a question for me? to be yeah. honest I don't even know man like I haven't calculated it 
But, yeah, uh, so I'm assuming because it's very, based on my experience as well, it's very low. Like you have yeah. to put like I don't know, maybe ten or twenty LinkedIn posts to get one actual solid client that's paying you. Mm-hmm. And so then when you think about it, you're like, okay, I'm doing the same thing again and again, and the return is not there. Like you're mm-hmm. you're not seeing the sort of return that you expect to see, which is mm-hmm. what we all do, right? Like we want to post a LinkedIn post. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a client. And then yeah. you come in, you're seeing the same people comment on it. You're seeing the same sort of like that's coming in. Mm-hmm. You're seeing the same things like, haha, thank you, <laughs> kind of thing. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> okay. But like, you're just, and then you see like a DM that suddenly is like, oh, it's just a spam. Or like someone <laughs> yeah. telling you they want to work for you or something like that. You just, this is a bit of like a disappointment kind of thing. Yeah, but you just which, need which patience, I, isn't it? Sorry? You just need a bit of patience. Yeah, because I, I definitely do that as well sometimes. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to post this. And it does well or whatever. But it's a sort of same, same thing, you know. I post something, you know, there's a bunch of comments on it, which which is nice to see, you know, boost your ego a little bit and gives you a dopamine hit. <laughs> but like, yeah, also like, ah, oh, why is no one reaching out to to work or why is this like, you know, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, I like, know. We mean, have yeah. this expectation of like, oh, I'm gonna put this work, I'm gonna get so much work, but yeah. it normally doesn't happen. Yeah. But I think we just gotta like, like, not focus on the goal, but just focus on the journey. Kind of thing where you're just gonna you just gotta keep doing it whether it it makes you a client or not you just gotta do it because yeah. either you like doing it or you think it's it's part of the job, um, kind of thing. So does, yeah, does that so, answer um, your question? Yeah, yeah, that actually that, that actually answers it pretty well. But um, one thing that I've done. So the reason I asked you that is because I actually tested out. I tried to find a solution for that problem that I mentioned where okay, I got my daily tasks, but um it doesn't really seem like like well, whenever I wake up and I see my to-do list I'm like okay yeah I'm gonna do this and I kind of do it half-heartedly if that makes sense yeah and I don't kind of see give me an example like yeah I don't know give me an example of a to-do list of like let's say today or yesterday so let me actually check it Bloody yeah God. so for example today I had to send some this is actually one thing that we I, I want to talk about but I'll say that later but today was record some client training videos or and also write um some template emails so that's just mm-hmm. to make the process of you know whenever a client you know wants to so there's a lot of processes that are just so repeated for example you know our client is confused on how to edit their website on the editor so yeah. i can just quickly make a template video and then that means i don't have to create a new one every single time so that that's that is um one of my tasks and another one is take notes from a call that i had with um a linkedin marketer mm-hmm. um and then another one for example is da, 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 complete your linkedin youtube google slps so that's one thing that i had to do so like these are just the tasks that are today but um mm-hmm. sometimes i think so- to myself oh like you know did these tasks they seem a bit I don't know. Like, it admin, admin like, work, you know, have a very high ROI. So yeah. the reason, and so, so I actually realized this quite a long time ago, to be honest. And then I found like I tried to test out a solution. So one thing that I done, so I I realized that the problem was that whenever I looked at a task, I didn't I didn't want to do it because I couldn't really see the results it's going to give me. Mm-hmm. So what I done is before whenever I write a task down, now what I do is I. You know, I use an app called Todoist, and in that you can write a description of the task. So what I do yeah. in the description is um, I just write down, okay, what kind of results is, is this going to provide? So, for example, one of them, um, you know, uh, the, the first task that I said, were, which was um, record client training videos. So mm. if I just look at that, create client training videos, it is is a good goal because it's very specific and it tells you what to do, right? So if I look at it, I can be like, okay, okay let me do it. But for me... I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is me, but I look at. It, I'm like, mm, like, is that really going to provide results? Is that really a priority? I yeah. End up so, doing it. so what I done is yeah. in the description I wrote down. Okay, if you do this, what is going to happen is that your process are going to get a lot smoother. You're going to save time when you're chatting to with, chatting with the clients. And I listed down all of the reasons why I should do that that task and the results. But for example, done. for for let's say record the video, if you don't want to do it, wouldn't it be easier just to send like let's say Webflow University links? And then maybe charge for the videos. Like let's say, uh, you know, if you really want something, you know, you can pay me for it, and I can give you yeah. a video. So that could add a little bit of incentive because I don't think most clients, yeah. 
to be fair, yeah. what I've done, most clients don't care. They don't even edit the website that often. And even if they do, they'll be like, oh, can you just do it? I'm like, okay, I'll just... Because <laughs> I've, I've never... It's been very rare a client actually learns a new tool mm. and uses it, unless it's like a marketing team or somebody's job to maintain a site. But most yeah. of the time, the client just doesn't watch a video and, and, and learn it. You know, even though they know how to do it, they're, they're not going to do it, right? Yeah. So maybe yeah, stuff I mean, like this, I mean, it's, it's valuable for us, like, oh, okay, be cool, you know, a client, uh, they'll appreciate a, a Loom video of us talking through their site. Mm. But you got to understand, like, they have other things to do, like their own business and kind of thing. Sometimes it's just easier, just, you know, just let me know if you have any changes. I can probably do it for you. Or if you want a video or whatever, I pay me and I can do it for you. Then you remove that little a to-do list, just remove it from your to-do list, right? Yeah. And you only do I mean, it when you need to do it. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, totally. But I yeah. mean, okay, fine, bro. All right, cool. But let's use another example of a task. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that actually makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah, the idea is to, to, to eliminate a lot of this. Yeah. yeah, like try to eliminate a lot of this to-do list thing. Try to keep mm. the to-do list to like one or two items throughout really? the day. Yeah, because then you will then have time to do other things that you want to do or All just right. oh, yeah. be free, right? You know, if you want to just work on client work, you can. Like anything that's not part of the job, let's say it's just admin mm-hmm. work, like, oh, I have to add this, do this blog post or whatever. If let's say it's a blog post and you don't want to do it, can I then just get someone else to do it? Like, can I pay someone to do it? Like, yeah. then you, you remove it from your to-do list and you add it, add it to mm-hmm. someone else. Yeah, or let's say if you want to do like, yeah, or let's say there's a lot of these little tweaks that you got to do. Let's say update your YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, whatever thing that you mentioned. Is there any other task throughout the week that's going to take the same amount of time? Then you yeah. can just batch it all together. And then you yeah. can say, okay, Monday, every Monday morning or every Saturday afternoon, I'm just going to do this, 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 this. So for me, it's like every Saturday or like Sunday, I'll check analytics, I'll check um, search, um, I'll check speed or whatever just to make sure everything's running, everything's working. What's the analytics for this week versus last week? And that, so I don't do it throughout the week. I just do it in one day. Like, does yeah. that make sense? If let's yeah. say I want to add a new portfolio, I only do it like whenever I'm doing all of this maintenance stuff. I'm yeah. updating like accounts, invoices, sending invoices, um, and adding receipts, paying for stuff, canceling stuff. Everything is batched together in like one slot in a day then you know you're not seeing that to-do list every every single day you're just seeing it like once a week yeah i mean yeah i mean th- that makes sense and um that's what i do for content most of the time yeah I batch making do, right? yeah. yeah i just batch create content um yeah. on the weekend so saturday sunday i uh, like today for example i recorded um one episode for our talk flow show oh shit um yeah so uh, you know that uh, that talk flow development series where we build out so basically if, if the people for the people watching we're gonna have like a development series where we build out our talk flow website mm-hmm. and yes yeah, so i created last week i created one video which is the first episode that's where i talk about like um oh i've already done it no um i, I recorded it just the first oh, okay, episode. Sure. so it's like yeah. eight parts i think and today i recorded it. no what did i record today shit Oh, sorry. Yesterday, I recorded the second part. Yesterday, I oh, okay, that's nice. Part. Oh shit. Yeah. So I'll, I'll show you like after the after this episode. Yeah. Like, yeah what so you designed it already, is it? Yeah, I I showed you, isn't it? I showed you the talk flow website that I designed. This is a long time ago too. I actually designed it so. Oh long. yeah, 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 yeah. It was like when you first started. Like we were so excited. Yeah, and I yeah. designed it like, quite quick, and it was like so yeah. long. Ago, I've been procrastinating at developing it. Yeah. Yes, then yeah, last week I recorded the first one. Yesterday I recorded uh, the second episode, and I also recorded. I'm going to create um, my own personal channel as well, and I just recorded one quick video with that. It's like five mm. workflow hacks or something like that, and I just oh, right, created. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I recorded that as well. So yeah, I recorded. I do batch create content, and I was also writing a couple of um, uh, LinkedIn posts as well, but um. Yeah, man, like, it's, it is good to batch create content, but I've actually got a question for you, man. Like, I haven't, I don't think I've asked you this before, but I really want to know, like, how does your day look like? Like, for example, Ooh. how much, like, on, on a normal day, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Like how much time do you spend on creating client uh, uh, client work, marketing, networking, emails, and all that stuff? Honestly, I think I would say like ninety percent of my time is spent on client work, workflow no work, designing. Okay. Honestly, I, I I really don't think I spend enough time on like marketing or content. Bro, you know, for me, it's the opposite. I spend like ninety percent of my time marketing and all of this stuff, and ten percent of my time doing. <laughs> yeah, because. Like, yeah, because I, I don't know why it's it's because I, I do a lot of the things myself, right? So mm. I'm I, that's why I wanted to like talk about it later as well. I need to stop doing this where I focus 90% of my time on like doing web flow work and designing yeah. and communicating with the client and emails. Like I need to be focusing more on like like business stuff like sales, marketing. Mm. But I don't see what else I can do, and that's the issue. Bro, it's I'm not. Insane, I'm man. because yeah. I'm not a marketer. I'm not a, a content specialist or whatever. So even if I do that, I don't feel productive. Like when I when let's no. say let's say when I make a LinkedIn post or whatever, when I batch create all these posts, I just feel it's not a productive use of my time. Bro, Whereas, that's exactly what I was saying before. Yeah. I, I yeah, because it's it's not my expertise. You know, I might doing I might be doing it. It's basically learning another skill on its own. Because mm. we are good at web flow, we are good at designing, but we are not good at marketing. We're not sales is definitely we have to learn because you have to sell mm. to the clients, which you know you read books and and watch courses, take notes, whatever, and then you up your skills on like development, like you know making sure you you are updated on the latest news, um, coding and all this all this other stuff that's very related within mm. the business. But like if I stop doing this and I start doing marketing and like you know content making youtube videos editing them or communicating whoever's editing it i'll completely lose the business mm. meaning that i won't be having clients i won't be improving my work i won't be in the webflow game mm. um so i'm i'm like half assed between like should i stop doing this 90 percent of my day just working on webflow and mm. and all of this and focus more on like marketing and team building or whatever yeah. But like at this point, I don't think I'm at that stage yet where I need to do a lot of marketing or I need to focus my effort. Because yeah. I, I don't think it's a good use of my time to start doing a lot of marketing. I need to probably hire someone to do that, which is what I wanted to do. You yeah. know, get someone to do marketing or like some sort of content or you know what I mean. Yeah. So my, my most of my days, I would say like I wake up, work, like 9 30 10 10 30 <laughs> and my work day starts at like 11 i get my full-time job work done first um any priority work that comes in i, I try to finish that off and then if there's time because it's all remote right i have a lot of time in right. between there's no traveling there's no chit chat or whatever after that i i do client work that's you know whether it's designing something developing something feedback work or whatever in between there's a lot of procrastination of like checking Slack, checking email, which I really stop should stop doing. I I, I want to just delete Slack on my computer. It's so distracting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Every channel it just comes up to you and you're like, oh, someone messaged me, but it's not. So I need yeah. to I, yeah, a lot of my time goes in there. And then maybe marketing, connecting, networking, lead. I would say like one hour a week or two hours a week. I really don't spend a lot of time on that. Really? Yeah. Because oh, oh, it's like an afterthought like, for me. Yeah. Like you spend a lot of time. Okay. So but I feel like I can relate to a lot. But the only yeah. difference is that mine's the opposite. Yeah. Um, you're, yeah. You're Whenever I see you, you're always co- connecting with people, chatting on LinkedIn, sharing yeah. content. You're doing a lot on the business stuff. Mm. Whereas I'm doing a lot more in the business stuff. Yeah right and yeah yeah but like for me when i'm doing client work i'm like okay yes i'm doing i i enjoy i love doing client work i do that quite a lot like i do it every day but i spend most of my time i would say 75 percent of my time doing business stuff like in working in my business yeah. marketing so whenever i do client work I, I have the same mindset that you have when you're doing marketing like i'm like yeah. Mm, yeah, I'm doing client work, yeah, but I want to get another client that's more expensive. Uh, like, yeah, I want to hit, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, for example, for me, it's, I, I don't know whether I told you this, but I yeah. see this this pattern for like a year and a half. Mm. It's always a lot of clients where I'm so busy that I have, I have no time to post on LinkedIn, I have no time to yeah. communicate with anyone. I'm doing all these projects, and then there's like a sharp drop where mm. then I go back into like 
connecting with people, sending emails, um, posting on LinkedIn, you know, then upgrading my portfolio, posting that out, doing clonables. And then there'll be like a huge peak where there's like a load of client that comes in. Mm. And it's just still me, right? So I'm just doing a lot of the work, picking up a lot of the work. And then after that's done, I, I go back down. So November has been like this huge spike of like, I don't know, six, seven projects, excluding what I have in my full-time work and all of this. So it's like a lot of things I, I was just doing. And it kind of yeah. like, I was pushed to my limit this month where then I realized, no, I can't keep doing this. Because now my mindset is like, no, no, December, I, I, I want to take a break. I cannot do this. So December, there'll be a natural, like, like a decline in work mm. and decline in revenue. So it's always like a peak. You know, the last peak was like September and then October, there's like a little down period. And then November, there's like a peak. And then December is going to be a down period. I can kind of yeah, see yeah. this flow. In a way, it's good. Like I told my friend like, man, this 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 one month, I'm so freaking busy. And then the next month, I'll be like, so so empty. I'm like, and nothing to do. <laughs> he's, like, oh. he's like, oh, that's good, isn't it? I'm like, eh, it's not that good. Like you can oh, be free oh, for oh, like... What do you think the perfect scenario is where like there's a perfect balance of both? You Honestly, I, I will have every something to do every single week or every single day, but then I can then take the day off whenever I want to. Like, let's mm-hmm. say I want to take midday, like Wednesday off, I can. I'm not like bound to like, I have like six, seven projects to work on. I have yeah. this whole month, I've not taken a weekend. This is like the first weekend I took off yeah. because I had no time and all the projects I I don't know why I take on always has this. Yeah, that, that's what I was actually going to say. Like, don't you think it's your fault because you it don't is. say no? <laughs> it <laughs> is. It is. Com- I completely agree. It's my fault. And it's yeah. because two things happened this month that I learned is one, don't let clients book you without paying your deposit. Meaning that mm. I had clients come to me on like September and they said, we worked and then they come back. They're like, oh, this, this is a good project. Uh, we, we might have another one in mid-November. Are you free? And I'm looking at my calendar in September or like early September. I'm like, November is like two months away. Pff, yeah, I'm free. I can do any time in November. <laughs> and then another client will come. They'll be like, oh, are you free mid-November? I'm like, yeah, yeah, November. I have no projects. <laughs> and then what happened this month is like every single client that said yes came back and they're like, hey, v, this is a project. I'm like, oh, shit. And mm-hmm. I had like three deadlines on the same day. Oh, just remember, okay. just imagine three clients want everything done, finished on the same day. And I'm like, okay, I, I messed up. I should have at least blocked that date out. But the fear I had to do that was, let's say this client says, okay, let's book maybe November 12th to November 24th. Mm-hmm. And then they come back and say, sorry, the project has been postponed. I will lose the two, three weeks of, of work. Does that make sense? Because yeah. then other prospects will come and they say, oh, can you do? And I'm like, no, 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 I have another project. So I didn't want to do that. So I just say yes to every single thing. And yeah. I, I pushed myself into a corner and, and really this 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 month has been like a, a stupid month, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you so know, you, I think yeah. what you should do, yeah. Firstly, you should say no. Like that's a huge thing. Like, no, the, me, thing is, the budget I, is right. Uh, the budget is nice. The, and I had the time. Nice, I had the it. time. That's the problem. Yeah. I oh, felt I like I, I had the time. And I, and I felt like, oh, there's a lot of money for the amount of time. Great. The only thing I didn't catch is all of these projects coming in together, mm. you know, and without a team or without another person to completely rely on. I know there's Dave that, that I don't know, he might watch this. He's the only person I can rely on to give some work on like a very short notice and he gets it done as well. So I'm like, I only have one person to do it. And then it's, 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 pretty much half my fault half not my fault yeah uh, it's like i cannot say no to a client without having like a payment because then yeah. i'm just losing money for no reason and yeah. i can't say no because the budget wasn't low as well it's not like a thousand dollar budget they're like proper proper like two thousand three thousand even four thousand dollar budgets yeah. and i can't just say no because somebody said they want to work with me like two three months from now yeah. so the one rule that i'm going to start doing is if you want to book me a hit of like a month, you got to pay like a deposit 500 or 200 or whatever so that I can actually lock the dates and not book in myself too much. Mm. And second is to start finding a team. Um, you know, whether, because the only fear with having a team is like, do I have enough work to give them to do? Second, mm. do I have enough money or budget to pay them to do what they need to do? Mm. Right? 
So yeah. now I'm thinking of like, okay, I need to hire people. I need to like, I can't do everything myself. Even yeah. though a lot, of the all, technically a hundred percent of the money that I get is mine, but there's an opportunity cost to that, which is I stop looking for clients. I mm. stop engaging. I stop putting out LinkedIn. So it's always like this peak and trough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Going that forward, sense, bro, one thing that I think so, like, well, okay, I think a better way of me like answering that is to, to tell you what I do, right? Yeah. So the other day, yeah, I had a client. I had a project coming in. It was a very, very good budget. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very a beautiful budget, beautiful. <laughs> but I said no. Say because, it. <laughs> because I knew that I won't have time to actually meet their requirement. I, I knew that I wouldn't do my best work because I had quite a short yeah. timeline. And they wanted okay. to get started quite quite quickly, but I said no. I feel like you probably would have said yes. So like yeah, because I kind of like about saying no, isn't it? And finding the balance. And you know, you know, I had the you same that you wish that you had one day, like you could just take one day off, bro. I take, yeah. I take days off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is what happened. So what happened is like, so I was stuck on this very, very annoying project for like three weeks or two weeks. And I was like, no, 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 this, this weekend I'm taking it off. I'm not taking any more project. Oh. And then a client came and they pretty much paid me two X of what I charge for a single page for one page, bro, just one page. Yeah. And they're paying me like two or three times more than what I got paid for. Like my normal projects. Yeah. How can I not say yes to that? I'm like, yeah. ah, shit. Actually, I didn't say yes immediately. I was like, uh, no, nah, I don't think the timeline was like four days and they oh. wanted it done by Monday. So they, they, we got on a call on Thursday and they wanted it done by Tuesday or Monday. And, but the thing is, he was so hesitant. He was so into working with me. Like, because when I said, nah, I, initially I was like, nah, I'm quite, quite busy. Uh, it's a very short deadline. I can't work it. And he's like, I understand. I completely understand. It's a, it's a tight deadline, but you know, maybe, maybe we can work something out. You know, you can design it. Uh, we cannot have any feedback. That's completely fine. I'm like, he could have just immediately just left the call. Like, okay, no problem. Thank you. Bye. But he was yeah. so into it. He was like, yeah, let me share all the assets we have. Um, Don't worry. We can share the work as well. How did he find uh, you? Uh, Clonable. He, oh. saw the, he saw the mobile scrolling Clonable thing. Mm -hmm. And, he, and he, he tried to do it himself, but he couldn't, couldn't figure it out. He's not like a no code. He's a, he's a coder, but he's not a no code. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know how it's actually structured. And I was like, ah, oh, it sounds like a nice guy. Your budget is nice. He's understanding. He understands the timeline. Hmm. And I'm like, screw it. I'll just take it on. To be fair, that was probably the best project I worked on because okay. I, was, I had 100% creative freedom on it. Uh, nice. I just did. Yeah. And I spent like the whole Saturday just designing it and developing it. And, and honestly, I, I think it's a really, really nice site. I, I went, compared to the other work I done this month, that's probably the most I cared about to do like a lot of better, like a lot more good work than I normally wanted to do, mainly mm. because of the budget and also the amount of trust they had on me. So I'm mm. like, it's it's kind of not, I know I, I, I fucked myself in the ass when I say yeah. yes, but like I didn't regret that project, but I regret all the other projects that I took on. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have like those unicorn projects that come to your way, like... Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, Ideally, what I wanted this you know? month to have happened is that all this project will come in and I'll have somebody to to allocate it. So Dave worked with me on one of the projects that came in this month. And I told him, honestly, if you didn't come in, I have no idea how I would have done this project. Like I had to probably turn away the client and probably lose because it's an agency client. So you get yeah. this, this monthly or like a recurring sort of project vibe from them. Yeah. And I was like, if Dave didn't step in to help with that, I probably would have lost that client. Then yeah. I realized okay, you know what? You probably need a team. Not because you, you know, you're, you're bad at something or whatever. It's just, you, you are limited by 24 hours a day. Hmm. You know, when, if you can outsource a lot of the work, not outsource in the sense that you trust somebody to do the work and you can do some other work, then it's easier to either build the business and also, you know, focus on other things that you want to focus yeah. on. Yeah, that's, that, yeah. that's like the hard part, finding a person that you can trust. Uh, it is like, very hard, bro. Uh, it's, uh, and especially with like a very person, tight... Once yeah. you find a person like that, bro, we have to hold them tight. Like, if you yeah. give them a nice grip. Especially with, with a like, very tight deadline as well. Like, you can't, yeah. you're like, ah, like, you know, you can't force that person to work, drop everything they do and just focus on you. Yeah. Uh, and also, yeah, it's just, it's a bit tricky. Efficient. Like, you know, because you're growing, you're still, 
like a one man team mm-hmm. but it's time to maybe get someone to come in and help and this is why i was thinking all this marketing stuff all this content stuff it's not something i enjoy doing uh it's not something i'm good at nor i want to do so maybe yeah, what, i need to what, get what comes into marketing like is it just because marketing is so actually so... i just have no idea what to do so for example besides posting on linkedin uh, or like facebook or what else do you do what yeah. what so, do bro, other people do i've actually figured this way let me let me actually cuz i actually wrote this down now. like i got like a funnel that i made um i think i showed this to you before did i not no I don't remember but um it's like a funnel so so what i do normally is i think i told you about so firstly the reach out, out method right sorry the the reach out method right Yeah 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 so I was going to actually mention that so firstly shout out Harry Roper like yeah his his, his link is going to be in the comments perhaps but um he has like, this really really cool like LinkedIn outreach method and mm-hmm. um yeah so to, to like answer what you said right marketing let me try to find that page so firstly the topic so this is like a funnel right here I'm not sure if you can see yeah that's like a funnel that I made yeah. and um so on the top of the funnel is about just LinkedIn. filling it up Like yeah. a lead gen, which is what you're, what which is what you're doing, right? You're creating content yeah. that comes on that comes on to you know filling up your funnel, yeah. right? And then once they get down the funnel, you have to nurture them. So let's say you know, for example, yourself that you you um, release a clonable, and then that person reached out to you, and now you're trying to nurture them to become to um, get on a call with you. Yeah, okay, you ask them for a call. Now they move on to the next step, which is the, obviously the sales call. Yeah. And you have to ask you have to ask questions, you have to send them a proposal, send them an invoice, you have to onboard them, you know, yeah. add a black channel whatever, and then that's it. And then you just deliver the project and bye bye. Yeah. So like what I try to do in this, and I think what you perhaps need to do as well is try to figure out which how which one of these steps are repeatable. Yeah. So next to each of these, right, I have like the letter R which means is repeatable and mm-hmm. NR means it's not, not repeatable. repeatable so networking is not repeatable right like you can't yeah. have a process of networking you have to physically go out meet people with some people messages and stuff but yeah. marketing and creating content can be repeatable like you can have a process like i have a notion document where i like push everything through and bro mm-hmm. i feel like that that would definitely like free up a lot of your time like that definitely freed up a lot of my time as well like, yeah i i yeah i was thinking of like trying to because i definitely tried to do this batch linkedin yeah. thing before like last year like yeah. i batch create a bunch of posts but i just feel like it's this like i just once i, I you know let's say i write it this week but i don't want to post it i'm like i'm reading it, i'm like oh man that that sounds so cringe you know it's not <laughs> because whenever i sit on something and then i i look at it again i'm like i hate this shit bro all the linkedin all the linkedin so posts i, I made like that Trust no, me. but the thing is, all the LinkedIn posts I create is literally me on LinkedIn just typing it out, and I hit enter. And oh, it's, it's posted. I, I don't plan it, and I like that. If I don't have anything to say, I just don't say anything. I go mm-hmm. like this week. I went on LinkedIn. I was like, "What do I say this week?" I was typing something on like, about no code and like how code versus no code, and I'm like, "You know what? Nobody's gonna read this." I feel like I'm just writing it because I want to put something out there, and not yeah. because I have something to say. I just deleted it and just went back to work. And I'm not such a big fan of like. I know it's important like connect with people, engage with them, mm-hmm. and like talk to them, meet them. But for me, I I I feel it's much more easier when they see the work and they need something from me, they come to me. Whereas mm-hmm. it's more of like this warm reach, right? Where they they know who I am, they know what I do, they see the work, and they have a need of like, okay, I need to redo my website or I have a problem with something, and then they come to me. Because then mm. I feel like it's a, bl- a bit more of a productive conversation, whereas if I l- connect with that person and I'm engaging with them like, haha, that's a nice post, or oh, that's amazing, congrats, and then sending them a DM like, hey, how are you? You know, let's chat. I just yeah. feel like there's a lot of this is like very salesy, it's not in yeah. a bad way, but I just don't feel very genuine talking about it. Because then yeah. if they ask me anything, I'm not prepared or you know, it's not within the domain that I, that I'm very comfortable in. Whereas, if for example, that clonable one, when they see the work and they come and reach out, I'm so much more confident, so much more mm-hmm. at ease, because they have already seen the website. I don't have to prove myself. I don't have to sound like I know what I what I'm doing. Yeah. 
So, so the idea, I think, what you're trying to say is, you prefer warm leads than you know approaching. Very much. Or yeah, because like cold leads kind of make me feel very. Because I, I definitely I tried this LinkedIn stuff. Um, it it works, man. I told you, I don't know whether you know, but I, I told you that this big client. I don't want to name them. Um, but you kind of figure oh. out because I didn't, I didn't figure out who they were because oh, it was such I a big company. Fun. Yeah, I just message. I just connected with the marketing head, and I and I just said, oh, I've used their product before, and then you're like, oh, are you a customer? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've I've used it in a while. I was in uni. And then you're like, oh, okay, cool. I have a I have a problem with my workflow site, and I think I and what did you help. say? You used it what in uni? I used their their service when I was in uni. Oh, I, I don't I don't put their name out there. <laughs> Which, but so, yeah, check, check the private chat. Is is that what you're talking about? Uh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, because then, yeah. yeah, then but then I felt the whole conversation. They kind of had the power because I met that person in real life. And yeah. they're like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. I'm yeah, like, how, how did they find you then? LinkedIn. Yeah, I I just connected with that person. I didn't know the company. I didn't know anything. I just saw marketing head at something, and I was like, ah, let's just connect. And that in the you know before you send a connection, you can add a note. So mm. I just said, hey, uh, would uh, you know be nice to connect with you? I've used your products, or your services before. Um, great, great work. And they're like, oh, are you a customer? That's great. Um, I have a, I have no idea they had they use Webflow as well, and then they were like, oh, I need help with with the Webflow site. Now, would you be interested in meeting in in the office or you know we can come down somewhere? I'm like, yeah, sure. But the whole conversation, I just felt like I wasn't in power because it was pretty much a cold lead. They do not know who I am. They have not seen my portfolio. Uh, when they met me, they're like, okay, show me your portfolio. And then I'm showing, and not my portfolio. Like, oh, have you done any work similar to this? I'm like. Okay, then I have to, you know, show them the portfolio, talk through them, and yeah. like tell what you did. It kind of felt like I'm resistance. Just, it? Yeah, it feels very, like I didn't feel very comfortable in it because I have to explain what I did. I have to show them my portfolio, what's my best work, what's my worst work, all all this 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 stuff just doesn't feel right. Whereas they, when mm-hmm. they come, when they see your work and then they come to you, it's like I don't have to prove anything. You know, they are pretty much mm-hmm. only so. You don't have to sell them or anything, right? Yeah. Yeah, they. Like the the last client I worked with, he, he was pretty much sold. Like he, they wanted to work because they saw the work and they liked the work and they just want to work with me, which is what yeah. I wanted to do. And for that, I'm now I'm thinking like I probably don't need a marketer. I probably need like a developer or a designer, so that yeah. then I can do more of this clonables or micro sites or some cool stuff that I can put out there yeah. instead of doing this, like the LinkedIn method and all that. It's like. It's not my technical. It's not something I'm good at. Meaning that it's not my job. Whereas mm. if I can mix, pretty much what FinSuite does, right? Like they mix marketing with their web flow technical speciality, and they, and they do like their own product and stuff, mm. which is a different sort of marketing, which I think is what is more interesting to me. Like for example, Timothy Ricks, the marketing he does is not like he connects with people or whatever. He he shows his work. And people see that work, and they want to, you know, watch his video. Yeah. So that that sort of marketing is more interesting. Oh, I see. Because yeah, then yeah. you are also useful in that marketing um, prospect. Whereas if you hire someone to do like all this outreach and re- lead generation for you, I have no idea how it works. So I cannot test them on yeah. like, how much is returning on the investment, or yeah. how productive, or how time, how how time efficient it is. Yeah, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Like that, that's what I think I told you this. I was because you know before I think me and you have like similar content where we just create content about yeah. web. Yeah. yeah. But I think I mentioned last week here yeah, that I'm trying to create industry specific content that I'm trying to target. Yeah. So I told like I told you at the beginning of it like I'm a oh you already knew but I, I told the people at the beginning I'm a dental student so I thought that would make sense for me to target healthcare companies and I also really enjoy healthcare so. Um, and I have worked with um, a few healthcare companies. So I tried to move my niche into the healthcare industry. And I think I told, I, did I tell you this for morning that I'm creating like um, health industry specific specific industry, yeah. Yeah, and I think I posted one article, I posted one like industry specific. Yeah, I, I saw it. On my LinkedIn. Yeah. And to be honest, like I knew it wasn't going to do well because like most of my connections are like web flow, web designers. Yeah. And when they see it, they were like, Oh, what's this guy posting about healthcare for? Yeah, they're probably gonna scroll <laughs> past it. But like, yeah. that, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to like 
get in front of the healthcare industry. But then the question arises that, you know, like you said, like um, you rather just put out your work, like how I was doing before, just showing my Webflow, con- creating Webflow content, showing my clonables, yeah. showing what I learned, all of that stuff. And then people coming, you know, looking at that, finding yeah. me and then reaching out to me yeah. specifically about Webflow work. Yeah, so because I around, think, yeah, yeah which go. niche you're going to do? Either it's Webflow or is it medical marketing uh, well, medical it's gonna, like, company. it's gonna be like website websites for healthcare in it so like yeah website, so that's a niche on its own isn't it like a, a medical website niche where mm-hmm. you can bring your expertise to it whereas a web flow i don't know whether in the finsuit stream they did you know like web flow i feel web flow itself is a very small niche mm-hmm. on its own it's only like two million people using it compared to billions of people using you know wordpress like one third of the websites built on WordPress, whereas only like a few, few hundred million websites are built on Webflow. Like mm. for me, I like having a client who just wants a Webflow work is already like a super, 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 super niche, mm. right? Yeah. And then if you add on top, just I wanted to ask you: Are you gonna do Webflow sites for medical or or healthcare websites? Like, are you gonna do okay. Webflow and medical? I think, well, I think the message I'm trying to get across with my content is that I'm a Webflow developer. Like how, like basically, you know how like I was before where people say I'm the Webflow guy, right? I create yeah. Webflow specific content, but yeah. also want people to know, yeah, that I have a passion for healthcare and yeah. not really a passion, but like, yeah, like, okay, he's a Webflow guy. He's an expert in Webflow, but he also really enjoys working in this part of the industry. And like, that's where his expertise Lives, yeah. Like, for example, industry. Harry Harry Roper, he does automotive, right? Yeah, yeah, he does automotive. Yeah. Does he promote himself as a website builder for automotive? I believe companies? he does. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I because does. I don't see him using Webflow agency or Webflow company anywhere except really? for the YouTube. Besides the YouTube thing, hmm. I think. He but does I that think branding and stuff as well. I believe I'm not really sure. Yeah, but I, I feel like yeah, he's he's more focused on like the automotive niche. Hmm. So then once you get the client, then you have to convince them of either using Webflow or if they want to use WordPress or something like that. Mm-hmm. For example, in the healthcare industry, the high high chance that they want something GDPR and all this cookie consent stuff to be very, very tight is because the healthcare industry is like very, very yeah, it's, much it's very regulated, right? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so then you have to probably might look into some other tech stack like you know or some other specific stuff for example if let's say you focus on this medical industry and let's say a a hospital comes to you and say hey can you redesign our website for us we have this database already and they have a big budget you're probably not going to convince them with webflow you've got to use some other stack Mm -hmm. to to do it so then yeah like once you have two separate niches i feel like you have to choose either this or that you can do both but one has to probably take more priority I mean, that makes sense, right? But, you know, my, my main goal behind, like, why i done that yeah. is because I, it will just, it, it will kind of, like, bridge the gap between... You yeah, what say, you're like, studying. Yeah, like, what yeah. I'm studying and what I'm working on. Like, it kind of will yeah. bridge that gap. Because right yeah. now, there's, like, a huge disconnect where, like, I'm using two... Comp- I'm, like, two completely different people. Yeah. In <laughs> yeah. And, in, like, yeah. work. So, like, I'm trying to bridge the gap. I'm trying to, like... Give it, like, give it, like, doctor... Some elements of both into, you know into each other that makes sense. <laughs> a, a doctor building website <laughs> yeah so like yeah, that that should be your niche <laughs> so i mean but you know what one the reason why i'm doing it is to be honest because i actually can't afford it like i feel like for, for you and for a lot of other people they they, uh, they they're not in the same position as i am like i'm very yeah. young like, i'm 90 i'm that's stupid yeah because i told you that yeah, yeah that's I'm, your... I'm in uni and i kind of i kind of can't oh sorry that's my timer <laughs> um, I kind of can't yeah. afford, you know, to do all of this stuff and experiment and try different yeah. stuff. That's yeah. why that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it. But if I wasn't like in a different position where, like, I'm like 25 and like, you know, no offense to anyone who's 25, but like, yeah. um, I'm outside of uni and I'm like, yeah, 20 and I gotta pay rent. That is like, when I it, it also makes sense period. to try to merge what you're learning with something that you can monetize it. Then you can mm-hmm. definitely be an industry specialist for example yeah. i i see the value in it because if let's say i have a hospital or if i have a, a clinic and 
the guy who's in charge of this agency is a doctor himself mm-hmm. you will have a lot more industry and experience you'll know about the privacy you'll know about the terms and conditions you know mm-hmm. about you know patient information or whatever yeah and you'll know what stack other companies are using so definitely there's a lot of value to that yeah. but then you would then probably have to go back and not call yourself a webflow developer because okay. most of these sites won't be built on webflow like you can convince them to build the front end like the marketing site on webflow but most of them would probably need some sort of back end or if they have a contact form that should go into like a very secure you know gdpr kind of stuff you know a lot yeah, of these legal know, issues like, that come in no any of the regulations at the moment it is quite regular because that's why a lot of hospital sites are very very shitty because there's a lot of regulations and mm. they're built long time ago you know mm. doctors can't afford it but to be fair most doctors don't even need a website like they just yeah. need a practice well you know i'm i'm not trying to build websites for hospitals like the the companies i'm trying to target are like exciting healthcare companies that like healthcare tech, tech, tech healthcare companies. is it yeah so like health tech yeah sorry for, so uh, so for example yeah so like tech healthcare companies not like yeah. these like old hospitals and shit okay like, then if let's say let's say you do something like i don't know a company that's doing like some ar stuff with in the medical field bro did you just say that, ar yeah bro cuz i worked with one client, yeah. i was they were an ar company and yeah. I was on a so let's say that. let's say would would then you being a doctor be useful or would then you being a website expert be useful like let's I say mean, you're a technical expert instead of a you know you know what i mean like yeah i mean because if if you're in the tech industry most of the time if you know how to code if you know what the tech stack and all of it is and it doesn't matter whether you're like the tech auto industry or the health tech industry or like the virtual tech or you know social media technology all all these yeah. different sort of technology like let's say if you're doing blockchain I don't need to know how the blockchain works. I just need to know what kind of vibe the company needs. Mm. Uh, what's the main goals? What's what's customers looking for? How it's going to function? Those kind of things like you don't need to know how exactly the blockchain works. Oh, oh, so what I believe you're asking is like what's the difference between like an example um what's the difference between a webflow expert and a healthcare webflow expert is that is yeah that what... yeah so yeah for example like you're saying you want to focus on the health tech mm. industry right does that is that a difference if let's say you are some you're something like fin suite right like you're just a, a very technical webflow developer or if you're a very professional medical kind of guy who has this tech stack in the background to be honest, like, bro i don't even know how to answer that question for like... me i see for, like for me i see where the doctor things comes more has a more prestige is when you're actually working with hospitals or mm. companies or the NHS building NHS sites or something like that where your expertise as a doctor is more valuable than your expertise as a developer mm. whereas if let's say it's a tech company it's just a health tech health tech company you being a doctor i don't think adds a lot more value than you being an actual technical expert mm. like let's say if this company needs like some cool ar shit even on their website if you're a doctor and you don't know how to do that it does not add a lot of value to them whereas if exactly. it's the vice versa thing even you're not a, a a doctor but you know how to get get whatever they need done that adds more value whereas mm-hmm. it's a different thing in the actual medical industry where let's say you being a doctor and building a site specifically for the nhs or whatever that would be a lot more valuable or even something like tech ai right like you being a doctor would add a lot more value to the company than you being an expert in the technical field hmm yeah that makes sense yeah, that actually makes yeah. a lot um i think for me bro honestly like it's just about having the experience like um hmm. i want out because like I, you know so this is my mindset like when i when i'm going through uni and i get to my fifth year whatever and i become a dentist and all that stuff yeah I'm going to be meeting a lot of people like I'm going to be knowing a lot of people that need websites and stuff and I'm mm. perhaps going to be knowing a lot of people going out starting healthcare companies bro since I started uni I know so many more people in the healthcare industry but now like through LinkedIn and like through just like networking in uni I know so many people that are doing like so many cool stuff in the healthcare space and I just I just thought to myself bro like it would just make sense for me to maybe maybe I was a bit too like i mean maybe i like jumped in the deep end too quickly by just claiming that i'm 
I do websites for only for healthcare companies. Maybe that was a bit too much. Mm-hmm. But like, I kind of thought, you know, again, bro, like my mindset was like, just merging the two. And like, um, you know what you said about, um, you know, your value as a, as as a web as as a web uh, webflow developer or as a doctor, you know which yeah. one would you know be more in certain situations. For me, bro, I'm I'm not trying to target hospitals. I'm just trying mm. to target healthcare companies, like technology healthcare companies. Yeah, I see a lot so, of like yeah, yeah. So if you're doing that, then I personally think if you can call yourself a technical expert, adds a lot more value to that mm. because I think this these people at the end of the day they. They, you know, they can go work with someone like FinSuite or Edgar Allen or some other agency or some other developer. Mm. It doesn't make a difference to them because this is one of website, right? Yeah. There's no doctor input that they usually need because they probably have their own team that's doing all the right. research and development. They well, need somebody about, to build. How about, how about, right, if, for example, FinSuite, of course, they probably have experience in the healthcare industry, but let's say FinSuite has no experience in the healthcare industry Mm. or they haven't really done a healthcare website before tech, tech healthcare website but yeah. then i come along <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm competing with finish me now yeah so i come along yeah. <laughs> i'm a web developer joe, joe wants to know your your location <laughs> yeah. i'm competing with joe but i i'm a web developer and yeah. i i'm very experienced in the healthcare tech, tech industry like building websites for healthcare tech companies and i come mm-hmm. to them like you know but then have their branches there I would still say f- FinSuite because then they would, even yeah. they don't have experience in this one very, very small field. Hmm. They have built so many sites that unless this website definitely needs something that only someone in the healthcare field can rectify, hmm. then they'll come to you. That's a very, yeah. like, that's, you're just shrinking it like, even smaller and smaller. Yeah, that makes right. sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I agree, bro. Yeah, because I think whenever people come to like websites or apps or some some sort of this tech stuff, they just want to work with whoever knows what they can do and whether they can figure it out, hmm. right? Because yeah, because I I really don't know. Un, again, unless you're actually working with actual doctors and actual surgeons and actual hospitals, your hmm. doctor name will bring you to the door, like open the door much more faster than someone like me without a doctor in it, mm. right? Like if, if Dr. Shais comes to the, like in the email, you, you'll have your doctor in it yeah. and a surgeon who owns the entire hospital, who's probably a doctor as well, the, the dean of the hospital, they see you as a doctor, there's a connection there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas if someone yeah. in the medical technology industry, the CEO is probably just some tech guy. They probably have yeah. no idea how the medical stuff works, yeah. right? And even oh, yeah, a marketing team. Yeah, yeah, most of the time they have a marketing head who has no idea what the hell they're doing. It's just yeah. they just want to sell their product or their service. Right. Yeah, they probably have their own. Yeah. I was, I was actually going to say that next. Like, one of the, so, although, like, okay, just using the scenario with me competing with FinSuite, yeah. So, like, of course, like, FinSuite is, I, was, I would have said the same thing. Like, of course, FinSuite is going to have the upper hand. Oh, I'm yeah. going to focus. Um, one second, man. All right, cool. So, why am I not on focus, man? I'm gonna focus, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna come closer to the camera, I think. There we go. All right, cool. So, like, um, where was that? Yeah, so, like, of course, things is gonna have the upper hand, like, when I do that. But yeah. for me, right, is in my unique situation, I'm in uni and I'm doing this. I just thought it would make sense firstly for me. I'm be, I'm coming in contact with people in the healthcare industry every day yeah. in uni. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So firstly, I have an advantage, firstly, in even being in front of people in the healthcare industry. So I feel like that would also put me in an advantage. And secondly, I think, I think eventually I will start developing more healthcare websites than other people because I'm in the healthcare space anyway. Yeah, maybe maybe you're going into I feel you're going in too early in the niching down stage. I'm d- because I'm once nothing. you're going too early down this niching mm-hmm. down thing, yeah. because I think even if you're in uni or whatever, again, if somebody in like final year of uni has this this startup that's funded, and then they come and see you, uh, and they're like, "Oh, can you build a website?" I think you being a technical expert would mean a lot more to them than you being a doctor there. 
Yeah. Like, does that make sense? But yeah, unless okay. down the line, let's say you have 20 or 25 or 30 sites of just medical tech health company, then you can go, you know what? Screw everything else. I know exactly what they want. I know who's their customer. I know what's their vibe. I know all the security, privacy, policy, whatever crap. Then you can go like, you know what? Pristine Digital is only exclusively a medical healthcare industry website builder, right? Mm. Whereas, yeah. I don't know how Harry Roper is. We've never met him, never talked to him. Maybe he has worked with many, many automotive industry or many, many car making companies or whatever that he can then use that as an experience and yeah. then get you and, you know, get, get to the, you know, most of the clients, even now when you work with them, they ask, do you have any clients very similar to this? So for example, if you're working with a blockchain company or like a DeFi company, if you have a company that I've worked with in the same field, like an NFT or like some cryptocurrency stuff, yeah, there's a little really connection. Helps, yeah. yeah, that really helps. Now yeah. imagine that 25 times, then you can definitely say you're niching down, right? Mm. That's that's why that's why you niche down once you have enough experience. Yeah. Whereas right now your niche is Webflow because all the Webflow, everything they've built is on Webflow. That's mm. your niche, right? Yeah. Then if somebody comes to you, oh, do you have any ex- experience in this Webflow? You can just send them your portfolio. Everything in there, is, it's just Webflow stuff. Yeah, that right? makes sense. You know, I think. Yeah. Oh man, my light battery is dying. But um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. That, I think yeah, but for. To be honest, but I'm just like testing the waters, seeing what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely worth worth the test, like, but it's also like yeah. to to think about it as well, because then mm. you might lose a lot of this opportunity that might come to you yeah. very early on. Like if you just niche down to super early, you might be looking somewhere. You know, you might be looking somewhere where there's no light, whereas there's you know a lot of people are looking for workflow developers. Yeah, and then you know they come to your profile and they see, oh, we only work with medical healthcare or something like that. And they're like, oh, I know, we're just going to find someone else. Yeah, right? that makes sense, yeah. yeah. So, I think, then... so would you think it would be better to not even, so just remove the healthcare niche from my name, yeah. but behind the scenes when I'm doing outreach and stuff, yeah. I'll get healthcare people. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, in your front end, until you have enough experience or enough portfolio to, to back that up, you don't mention it, hmm. right? And. Un- and then what in the back end you do it like in the back end you can go to leads and be like oh i'm a doctor you know i'm i'm studying medical uh, dental dentistry and i have a lot of uh, i you know knowledge about this stuff you mm. can do it in silent but not in in the in the front because then i feel it's like not yeah yeah might filter out a lot of clients like imagine if i put i only work with i don't know cryptocurrency companies if a restaurant or like a high end hotel or some other company wants to work they were like, uh, okay, these guys don't probably won't answer my email. I'll go to someone else. Yeah. That makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, bro, that was a banging like episode. I think we like we talk about quite a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. What I would say is like I think I think the vibe and we're gonna get used to it, isn't it? Like the vibe of the. Oh yeah, yeah. I completely forgot it was talks. recording. <laughs> yeah, like I think we're gonna get used to like old talks and because I feel like before yeah. we used to uh, we cover a lot more than we did now. Like, but um. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I will, what I'm looking forward to this week is just, to be honest, just doing the same consistent tasks every day. To be honest, that's it. And um, like I got, oh yeah, I actually got a couple of like calls this week as well. Sorry, th- this following week. Um, All right. Nice. For those watching, it's today Sunday. So like, yeah, the following week, I got like three or four calls. Yeah, I'm quite excited to see how those turn out. I'm gonna like start practicing. My sales lingo when I get into the mind of sales <laughs> and all that yeah. stuff. And um, yeah, my one of them is actually like quite a big budget, so I'm gonna be excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> but how about you, man? What you, nice. any you think you're looking forward to this week? No, nah, this week completely. I just wanna shut down. <laughs> really? For, for Christmas, just just close. I mean, I haven't shut down like the Calendly links, but I'm gonna block out like the last two weeks of December. Hmm. and maybe the first two weeks just do some internal stuff hmm. um i might redesign the website and build like a micro site as well like a like yeah. a separate landing page kind of thing i'm also looking for like a web designer i just don't know where to find them like not a web designer maybe like an illustrator or something like that because i've 
whenever I work on my website, I've literally nothing to work on other than just the portfolio images. Yeah. So I was like, look, I don't know where to find a like a proper web designer. I'm willing to pay, but it's just that where do I find them? Yeah. And they need to know a little bit of web flow as well. So Makes I might sense. look either a designer or like an illustrator just to help out with like some assets for the site. Um, mm. Yeah, and another micro site have like a more interactive, interactive and educational micro site. I just have a very rough idea of what I want, but I haven't written it out. Or, or but your more. own micro site for. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't want like the portfolio site to be very graphicy or like very heavy. Like I want it to load fast and get to the point straight because it's not for designers or to win awards. Yeah. It's mainly there for clients to see the work and book a call. So I probably won't push too much in terms of that like, interactivity or anything like that on the on the main site. But I want like a option for them to ex- if they want something more interactive to see what we can actually do on Webflow. So mm. They can just click on like a toggle that takes them to like a different different Yo, page. That would be sick, yeah. Yeah, and then that page is like completely interactive on like, and that will teach them what we do, how we do it, mm. and you know what's the difference. Like just a very very interactive site. Yeah, that's the idea. But I haven't I haven't really. Are gonna about. start that this week? Probably yeah. Look look for talent. I don't I don't do it myself honestly. I wanna, yeah. I, I want to properly get someone to design it and properly get someone to develop it. Oh, I or see. Probably, or maybe develop it myself because I have a lot of these ideas. But yeah. I don't want to design it. I want to probably work with somebody who knows how to design stuff properly. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But um, well, I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, bro. I haven't even touched my agency website in so long. Like, there's a few, yeah, there's a few errors <laughs> in there that I need to fix, but I just can't be asked. Yeah, mine, but mine, I, the last do before that I redesigned the site like four times, and then the last th- time I touched the site was like March of twenty twenty. That's mm. the that's the time I actually you know March or May of twenty twenty, you know, mm. May March of twenty twenty one. Sorry, mm. about yeah six seven eight months ago. Yeah, I just want to feel like I want to redesign that a little bit. It feels like a bit. It feels a bit dated, honestly. <laughs> bro, my one is so bad, bro. Like I need to update mine. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, that's like my that was like my first proper design. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. yeah, it's just very hard to give a shit about your own website. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like you, you design it for like a day, then you're like, oh my god. Yeah, but yes. you know, bro, like, I'm getting quite a lot more like traffic now. I'm trying to see my SEO pick up now. Like it's yeah. been a solid like nine, ten months, and yeah, man, I'm like ever since I updated my website because before my website wasn't SEO optimized. Mm. Now it's optimized for SEO. How yeah. Long? blogging so long but i got a new blog right now that i'm taking on so um, nice. yeah this week i'm gonna start publishing blogs hopefully um I'm yeah also gonna, um yeah just got calls i'm also gonna post on linkedin um just do the daily consistent tasks to be honest post on linkedin yeah. post on youtube update my linkedin crm and just yeah calls and just doing the same thing to be honest um yeah. i'm also making a website for, for my uni as well i think i showed you yeah, so, yeah, that's I, a nice one. Yeah, that's coming along nicely, and yeah. I'm gonna need a bit of uh, your coding help for that as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, Consultancy help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah December so, is so, so. So your agenda is finding the talent, just doing the same old client work. Yeah, just yeah, just more internal work, and probably I don't want to get any client work or anything like that, that's unless it. they come with a proper budget and a proper timeline, but. Anything by the year end or like they want it before New Year, I'm like, no, no, get out. Yeah. <laughs> Not interested. Yeah. I'm quite tired. Like this whole yeah, month so has been very tiring. I actually want to ask you just quickly before we end, yeah. yeah so yeah. what do you think is the main reason why people like choose you? Like, you know, let's say a client comes to you. What do you think is that like what, why do you think they're like, okay, the is the guy for us? Like, why do you think that? What do you think I the reason this, is? I ask myself that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think it's, I, bro, it's, uh, I think for me I think it's your skills like you're crazy you're crazy talented I would is say. it yeah I think <laughs> I feel I like I'm so like, bad <laughs> nah man you're really good like some of the websites you showed me they're crazy yeah so I would yeah, say thanks, like man. I think the reason why people choose you like the, from, from in, in my opinion is they just see you you as okay this is you, this is the guy he has the technical skills he, he can get shit done basically yeah. yeah, yeah. I think most of them see the portfolio and they like what they see, 
and they want to work, which makes it a lot more easier. I don't have to convince them. But yeah. I feel like if I keep doing this thing of like me doing everything, the quality is going to drop. Like this month, I saw a little bit of like quality drop because mm. I was getting annoyed with a lot of the feedback. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I could have caught that earlier. Quality, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, if I keep continuing doing this, the quality is definitely going to start dropping. Yeah. Bro, so for I'm me, gonna, like, I've like purposely kept my plate small or like my plate, like I don't fill <laughs> up my plate in terms of clients. Like honestly, I try yeah, to it's, purposely. This is that I, I want, I want to be busy, but it's just that the timeline sometimes they give is just too tight and I yeah. desperately need somebody to come in and like, at least in, in a very last minute basis or, or someone that works regularly, like a full-time employee or something like that. Where it's, you know, you have somebody on like a 24-7, not 24-7, but like, you know what I mean, right? You can just yeah, take a project, month, give it to them. Month, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because otherwise freelancers are just very expensive. You don't know how much they're going to charge. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so this whole month, we're just reflecting on that. Um, trying to see who I can maybe hire or like get like a freelance basis with them. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, man. Again, bro, for, I think one more thing I'm going to do is just build up my processes a bit more. And like, yeah, just batch create content every week, release it, you know, trying to shave off time slowly, slowly. So yeah. I can focus more on different parts of my life, to be honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Cool. So, you know what, bro? One thing that I've seen here is 100%, man, like, progress has been mad. Like, compared to, sorry, compared to what I've, at my position last year, where I was, yeah, <laughs> like you. I think if everyone, even yourself, now you can think about it. Like, think about what you were doing last year. Like the stuff I was doing last year, I don't. I think ninety percent of the stuff I was doing, I was doing last year, I'm not doing. Now. I had I no clients out. last year. That's the <laughs> last, yeah, last November. Year, I, was I was email outreach and like mass emails and all this. Yeah, stuff. I was literally like November, yeah. December. I had no clients. October, November, December. I had no clients. Zero. Yeah. And I, my first client was on like the first of January or or like second of January, so I'm like, oh yeah, one year. Now I'm like, I've just have too many clients. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm taking too much on. Yes, it's it's good, but then again, you gotta like know when you're at your peak and what mm-hmm. to do with it. Either you can increase your prices, or you can add someone to the thing so you can increase your capacity. Yeah, you know, either well, it's supply me, demand, anyways, yeah. right? Yeah, I think I think it is good to have like a minimum, but um, it is. That's think, it. Yeah. Well, what's your minimum, by the way? Like minimum two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. Oh, well, mine's the same now. Before it used to be fifteen hundred, but now up to, yeah. to like two thousand. Before it was like even even lower than fifteen hundred. Mine's like thousand two hundred. I'm like, yeah. yeah, sure, sure, I can do it. But now that's the thing. Even when I say two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, they still want to work. So I'm like. Anything more, I feel like I'm charging way too much. And nah, then bro, that's you, gonna, you, should, that's... you should never feel bad about how much you charge. No, because I, 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 what I don't want to happen is I, I'll say like, you know, I'll put like a very high price and then have no work for like three, four months because then I'm losing out. You, you know what I mean? Like you have to find like yeah. a nice balance. So I feel like right now the two, 2000 is the minimum and then it goes beyond that. It works, but I need to increase my capacity in a sense. Mm-hmm. Again, either you increase your supply or you inc- or you you increase the demand yeah, by either increasing your price. That's, that's a good capacity. analogy. I feel yeah. like I feel like you you right now the supply is way too high. Yeah, I have a lot. Yeah, it's because yeah. I can me, do the work. Me, my, I want to do the work. Yeah, yeah. For for me, right, it's like my demand. I would say my demand is okay. Like I am getting a lot of inquiries, a lot of calls, but I'm keeping my supply low. Like I'm not trying to. I'm only hiring the, like bro, like. If 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 I had like the same calls I'm having last year, I would have taken on every single person. I probably would have like twenty projects right now, but like I'm really really filtering out like a yeah. lot of people. Like yeah. even if it, it's one red flag, you're gone, bro. Yeah, I mean, that, it's it's not that heads. like I'm accepting like every project that comes in. There's definitely a lot of projects. I told you like the other client, the big the big one. Mm. I just I just don't want to work, so I just quoted like something extremely high. And they didn't want to work, so that's fine. It's <laughs> just that the clients that came in came were were planned a few months ahead, so I had no idea of how much it's gonna be. Yeah. And then on this month, there was also like a few clients that came in as well. So I think yeah, the 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 moral of the story is I need to increase capacity, either yeah. by just work getting them and working on internal products or internal stuff, 
you know, because otherwise I'm just going to be a freelancer basically, right? Yeah. I'll have I have peaks and drops, peaks and drops. Whereas if you're a proper business with the proper capacity, you can spread it out on like a on like a more even space, I feel. Mm. Because right now, your yeah, projects definitely help make a lot of money so that you can put it back into the business. Mm. So I definitely have enough money to hire someone, but I just don't want to waste my money, you know what I mean? Mm, you just pay yeah. them and then they don't do anything. They're sitting there for work. Yeah, a lot of people have nightmares when it comes to like hiring people yeah. that you thought are good, but you end up like uh, being quite terrible. Yeah, so I need to like, before even hiring, I need to know what they're going to be doing, how much they're going to be doing, what they're going to be doing, either so whether working on the internal side or a clonable yeah. or something like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think by next year, I should be like looking to hire someone or like something like that. Yeah. yeah I'm more well, I'm excited to see what's happening next year, man. Like, yeah, same. I probably would, I probably would like not be doing half the stuff I'm, do- I'm doing now. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man, I'm excited, man, to see like where, you know, I go, where you go, just where... Where 2022 takes us. Yeah, where 2022 takes us. It's just around the corner, to be honest. Yeah. You know, just about one month left. So, yeah, man, it's actually been a sick year, man. I swear. Yeah, it's it is. Honestly, really this year is just pretty, pretty good year. I had to maybe make a list of the good things that happened this year. I, I think, I think like, you know how normally, like, people say, oh, my entire year has been good. I think for me, I've just... I think for only the last four months, I've like started to see some kind of results come in. Before that, mm-hmm. it was just like compounding, you know, put before, before like four months ago, so like a year ago, I was just building up the activation energy. Like, yeah, you know, mine, like, mine probably started like around, I would say April is when I realized, oh shit, there's, you know, people want to work with me. Like I had projects coming in. Or oh, like not even a monthly thing. Like yeah, it's like April was when I'm like, oh okay, people are actually specifically coming to work. You mm. know, I'm not looking. I've not looked out for a client in a very long time. Mm. I think from April till like now has been like honestly a skyrocket thing. Yeah. But in that sense, I need to also keep in mind that it's only me at the moment, so I need to like learn how to reinvest the money back because otherwise yeah. you just keep the money. There's no point. You know, you're yeah. not gonna grow. You're gonna plateau at one point. Yeah. Because you reach. So, your best. so do you reckon like November has been your best month financially? Easily. Yeah, same, you know. Yeah. Easily, I think I've made half of my money that I have from September till November in just November. Because <laughs> oh. I, I, yeah, I, I incorporated. I, I, I registered my company in September, so I had mm. to restart my accounts, my my fiscal year from September. Mm. Um, so normally in the UK it's from April to April um, if you're a sole trader so initially I was a sole trader right so April 2021 to April 2022 so it's it's one year and I wanted and then because you know, I, was, uh, I registered my company it's, it's now September 2021 to September 2022 mm. the time between April to September I've made the same amount of money between September to November <sighs> And half of the money is probably November. <laughs> so yeah, you, it's just growth, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's growth. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, I need to take into scenarios like this where you know it's no longer it shouldn't be just me; it should be someone else as well. Yeah, like if I can oh, afford to hire well, someone. November, November's definitely been my best month as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it's not like I'm doing way more work. It's just I'm doing more higher quality work, which is sick. yeah. Like I'm yeah. way like bro, I can take a day off like for this entire I can take this entire week off and it won't affect anything. Like I have two or three projects going on right now, no stress, very good money. And yeah, that's what I like to be, bro, honestly. And I'm just yeah. gonna keep on increasing my price sorry, increasing my prices and keeping my uh, uh, supply uh, only yeah. having two or three projects at the same time or making yeah. more money. that makes sense. Yeah, in that model, you'll be a very good freelancer. Like Rand yeah. Segal, where he charged like 10k, 20k, because mm. your 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 supply is 24 hours a day. Mm. You're you're maxed out at that. Whereas oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I think eventually yeah. I will like come to the point where like yourself are hiring. Yeah, yeah. yeah then I, I your your I'm at that point right now. Yeah, yeah, because there's two two ways you can go down. One is the freelancer way, where you keep increasing your price as much mm. as people are willing to pay for you, and you can do something like Rand Segal, like 300 thousand dollars a year. Right, mm-hmm. and you work on it like maybe five, six projects, or mm-hmm. you can do something like, like a company where you have 10, 20 people working for you, 
and then then your supply is like all of their time combined so you mm. know if like 10 people in 8 hours you have 80 hours a day of supply yeah. you know what i mean yeah it's a different oh, we can oh. talk about it like another day <laughs> yeah but yeah man that's crazy yeah that's true i yeah. think eventually i will end up hiring people like yourself yeah but i don't think i think at the point right now i'm just trying to make us yeah yeah as, on my yeah. Own as possible that, that was what that, that was me like until this month as well like all the money is mine it's great yeah but then you're like oh fuck i'm losing my mental health <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro yeah cool. yeah, man. yeah 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 right, yeah next week we'll see you next week yeah guys we'll see i don't you know next how many week. people are gonna watch this yeah, yeah, there, there we'll was see. perhaps like a few cuts in between, but that's because we were like chatting. <laughs> okay. But like, yeah, hopefully you guys yeah. enjoyed like these random talks, alt talk. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this alt talk episode, and um, yeah, we'll be back with another one next week, hopefully. Take All right, care. see you. Bye bye. All right, bye, man. <laughs>